Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I wanted to just take a moment to welcome you to Career Magazine TV. We are going to talk a little bit today about the recruiter's responsibility. Now, I'd like for you all to just kind of share for our listening audience a little bit about what your background is. Briefly, very, very briefly, tell me if you are on the recruiter side, the career coaching side, the job seeker side, or the human resources side so that people will understand a little bit about your perspective and where you're coming from in this segment of Career Magazine TV. So I'll start with you. Hi, my name is David B. Wright. I'm the author of a book called Get a Job, Your Guide to Making Successful Career Moves. And I currently run a marketing company called W3 Group doing internet marketing. I've actually never been a recruiter, but the book came about through my experiences starting out as a job seeker combined with a lot of research, working with other people, and so on. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'm Adrian Graham. I am the owner of Hughes Consulting and Management. It is a recruitment consulting firm and also a career coaching firm. And I've been recruiting for 19 years now, so I come from it from both perspectives. Okay. My name is Tony Direct-Shear, and I have a consulting firm, uh, E2 LLC, and we do education consulting. And also my background is in recruiting, and I have a master's in human resource management. Okay. My name is Kathy Troyer. I am a, in HR right now. I'm currently in HR. Um, I deal um, straight from an employer side and also um, I deal a lot with recruiters. Um, so. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Jim Stroud. I have a background in recruiting 10 years, working for companies such as Microsoft, Google, Siemens, and MCI. I'm also a very prolific blogger, blogging about recruiting and job seeker perspectives. So I guess I come from both perspectives. And I currently publish the Hidden Job Report. Okay, well, perfect. And then, of course, you guys know I'm Stephanie C. Harper, publisher of Career Magazine. I have been in human resources for um, a little bit over 20 years, and so I've had an opportunity. My very first job was actually an administrative assistant in the HR department. So I haven't had an opportunity to work my way completely from one end of human resources to the other. So today we're going to talk about whose responsibility is it to do what in the interview process. Now, we've gone out with the Career Magazine TV cameras and we talked to people and we said, tell me about your experiences with recruiters. Tell me about some of the things that you've gone through in the job search process as you've talked to recruiters. And the one thing that I continued to get from job seekers was, I get no feedback. So let's talk about the process. Let's say, um, however you're sourcing candidates. Maybe they're coming to you from an online website or these are um, walk-in candidates or maybe candidates that were referred to you. What do you do? Whose responsibility is it to make the first contact? Who should be the person that says, uh, hey, I want to talk to you, I don't want to talk to you. And we'll talk a little bit about you know, the process. You know, I have lots of people saying to me, oh, I've been told to go around HR. Well, I have a different perspective of that. If you go around me, then when you need me, am I really gonna be willing to help you? So let's talk about at what point is it whose responsibility to do what? Let's first talk about the recruiter's responsibility to the employer. Um. I think the recruiter's responsibility to the employer is first and foremost find the qualified candidate that meets all of the uh, KSAs that are required in the job description 
and the needs of the actual client, which is the employer. If they can find that candidate, okay, nine times out of ten, you're not going to find that person that may have all 100% per se. What I mean by that is they may have some comparable software skills, but not that particular software skill that the client is using. But they still met the qualifications because if they can perform one software program, I'm pretty sure they can perform the one that the client is using as well. So you'll get almost like um, a DNA. You'll get a 99.98 or 99.99. That's as close as you can possibly want to try to get to 100% of finding that client for the, uh, the I'm sorry, the actual uh, employee for the client. Okay. Anyone else? I think it's important um, to remember uh, from an employer perspective uh, when your a recruiter is sending resumes to the employer to not um, to be open-minded and to be broad. I may say that I need these specific terms, but I can substitute something or some qualifications for a degree or something like that. So it's important to be flexible um, and not to um, disqualify someone that may be a really good candidate for the job, but not meet a hundred percent of what I'm looking for. Okay. So let's kind of, I want to, both of you spoke in regards to um, not having all of the qualifications. Mm -hmm. So at what point do you say this is enough or this is not enough? Are you looking for 50% or more? 60%? 10%? Probably depends on the availability of the skills. If you've got two people that meet more than half the skills, but the rest of them are not even close, then you might have to broaden your your search parameters a little bit more. If you've got a lot of candidates that meet the skills you're looking for, then it's basically it's a buyer's market and you can pick and choose a lot more specifically. But then it also is dictated by your rapport with your client, the employer, because I've dealt with recruiters before, they really didn't know their client. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who your employer client is, then you really can't decipher as far as, okay, this is a perfect candidate, or, well, she's got 75% knowing my client, I can still push her through. So because she seems to be a quick learner. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's, it's half and half. It's about your, your candidate having a good majority of what's required for the job, but then it's also about the recruiter knowing their client employer. That's thinking back on picking back on that. I think that's a very good point. One thing that I do, or used to do rather, was that um, not only would I look and see what the candidate had, I would analyze the last few hires that the manager had. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the manager may say they want A, B, and C, mm -hmm. um, but they really want X, Y, and Z, or they have a problem articulating what it is exactly they want. Right. So if I right. look at their the past few hires, say, okay, they typically hire someone from this type of company, they typically come from this type of school, they typically have this kind of attitude and mindset. Mm -hmm. So this this is the parameter I'm going to use when I talk to the candidate. Mm -hmm. and in fact, if the candidate can sell me that they have uh, these traits that I know the hiring manager will hire on, then that's how I'm going to. Uh, justify pushing them forward? Well, recruitment should be having a kickoff meeting anytime a job description comes through because we all know that what's on paper is not necessarily what the manager is looking for per Correct. se. So it's important to understand where the hiring manager will be flexible and understand what things that they would use to substitute and also get a feel of the environment, the team, see what type of person fits in with that, with that team and ask the current team members and someone in the current position what would make the ideal candidate for this? Mm -hmm. And then it's, from that point, it's the recruiter's responsibility to take that kind of prototype and go out there and find the right candidate. And part of that is articulating a job ad clearly over a job description. And that's where a lot of recruiters and HR people get it wrong. They cut and paste a job description into a job ad and it confuses the candidates because they'll say, well, your ad says you mm -hmm. need X amount of experience. I have that, why am I not a fit? And it's harder for us as recruiters to come back and say, well, you don't fit because, and give them that reason, because it's in black and white. But we as recruiters, recruiters didn't take the time to pare it down, make it into an ad versus a job description. So I think we take the onus on, even before the candidates start applying, making sure we're presenting the proper guidelines and the proper face of the position. Okay, so then we're saying that the, re the recruiter's responsibility to the employer is to accurately represent the position, one, is to be flexible, 
and make sure that we are closely matching what the employer is looking for. Now, um, one of the things that was said is that sometimes the employer doesn't know what they're looking for. So at that point, how does the recruiter connect? How does the recruiter connect the dots for the employer? And I know that that's where your experience as a recruiter comes in, but for our viewers, how, you know, what happens to that person that says, well, I do have all the qualifications. You said you needed someone with five years of experience, a degree, and they can file facts and copy. I can do all that. Why am I not the perfect candidate? Right. So at what point do, or who goes to the job seeker, or do you go back to the employer? What, what do you do at that point? You go back to the hiring manager. Okay. And make sure that you clearly understand. My managers, I chase them now. Okay. And I get a job, and it's just me. When I get a job description, I know off the bat that is not what I'm recruiting for. Okay. So I sit down and I make sure that they give me the ins and outs, personality and everything, before I even consider putting an ad out there. As a recruiter, it's my responsibility to make sure all of that is tackled so that we don't have those instances where candidates say, well, I was a fit and you didn't, you know, why am I not being selected? Then you have to understand what, what's the cause for rejection and be able to articulate that to the candidates. So when they do ask and say, well, I do have this experience, you can say, well, it's not specifically this. This is what we're looking for. Right. So we have to be clear from Jump Street. And it, it means looking beyond the job description, going, sitting down with the hiring manager, sitting down with the team members in the department, and clearly getting a picture of what they're looking for. That's exactly what I was going to say um, in a short summary. Um, when, when you're a client, doesn't know when the employer doesn't know exactly what the job is and a lot of times the hiring manager has no clue right. of what their associates are performing as far as the day-to-day -day job duties and responsibilities so that's when as a recruiter from the past I would go in and actually meet with some of their regular people and say well can you just tell me what you do day-to-day -day? and I would take those notes Tell me or show me the applications that you're using. How fast were you? How fast did it take for you to learn these applications? How user friendly are these applications? It just gives me a broad sense. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. But then on the flip side, as a consultant and a professional writer for different government organizations, um, I would go back to that hiring manager and I would say, well. Do you need someone to actually come in and write out all of your job descriptions? Mm -hmm. Because as a hiring manager, that's really not a good look yeah. for you to say, I need, a, I need someone for this position. Right. Well, how do you know mm -hmm. if you don't even know what the job description is? One, how do you know? Yeah. One thing that, that helped me in the past was um, I would interview someone who was in that role, mm -hmm. and I would record it and make them to a podcast and then post it online and then on a uh, job description on say Monster or what have you uh, it, at the bottom of it will say for even more information about this opportunity click listen to this download this podcast and listen to an interview where I'm talking to a hiring manager or talking to a candidate currently in their role and the person listening to that will say oh okay now I can really see what's really happening so right because you don't have someone that's saying I need this position filled right but if you are not aware of what the position responsibilities are are you saying you just need the seat field? Right. Uh -huh. Or are right. you saying you need the actual position field? Mm -hmm. And that's the difference there. So they got to know what they're looking for. So does that fall on the recruiter to, to find out what they're looking yes. for? Well, it, it, it sort of does. And I'll say because that's the, the employee is the recruiter's client. And the employee is saying, I need someone in this position. So really the recruiter indirectly is showing the employee, okay, you need this position field. You don't just need this seat field. You're saying I need this seat field because it's empty now. Nobody's there. That's what you're saying as an employee if you don't know what the job is. Mm -hmm. So the recruiter is really planting both ideas into the employer's head saying not only do you need this position field, but you also need these responsibilities done within this position because it may possibly be slowing down the productivity of your team or your group. Okay, so let me ask you this. So as you were saying, it is the recruiter's responsibility. So let's say, for instance, the hiring manager. Now, we all know that some of us are um, recruiting externally, mm -hmm. 
and some of us are recruiting internally. But at the same time, even if you are a current employee, that's still your internal customer. So at what point do you say, you know what, you're not sure what you want. You know, is it ever okay to go back and say that to your yeah. client? And at what point do you say, hey, I realize that you need someone in here by Friday, but you're really not ready to even begin the process because you don't have your foundation. You know, I can't get you the right person because you really don't know what you want. So I think that's absolutely vital because if, um, it's easy to say from my standpoint, yes, I need someone here to do something. But if I don't, I'm setting up myself up to fail if you guys just send me anybody and I'm looking at them like, okay, I need you to do something. I'm just not quite sure what yet. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's important from an employer standpoint to be strategic in um, when hiring anybody. Okay, and so would you say that this falls on the recruiter's head? Is this the um, human resources manager's head? One of the things when I was in corporate America, whenever I made sure that we had written job descriptions for every single position. But, you know, as you were saying, sometimes they are not exactly mirrored. Mm -hmm. And so I made sure that we had a written job description. I gave every candidate, every person that I interviewed with, I said, this is the job description. Do you understand your responsibilities? Because, of course, later on down the line, you know, if there has to be some disciplinary action, then you're clear up front what you're walking into, et cetera. So there is another piece to that mm -hmm. part of the puzzle. But at what point is it no longer the recruiter's responsibility? Well, I would say if you are to that point, then you should have an HR manager coming with you as a recruiter, coming with you and sit down with the hiring manager and scrap it and start from the bottom up. If you know that your hiring manager does not know what they need, it's just I have headcount to fill, I just need to seek fill, I don't know what goes with this position, then it's up to the HR manager and the recruiter together to sit down, call a meeting, and talk it out. Walk through it. If you have to bring in somebody who's currently in that role, mm -hmm. and sit down and walk it out, so that we don't walk out of that room without a viable job description. And, and you're correct on that, because the hiring manager has to know, and, and this will be a question that the recruiter may discuss with their own HR manager, well, does the hiring manager know what <laughs> corporate expects from he or she? And then you have to figure out, well, from your hiring manager, who's your client, then you say, well, what's your expectations of the job you're hiring for? And once you start with those expectations, because whatever the expectations he or she has will affect the expectations that are coming from higher up that's expected for he or she position mm -hmm. as the hiring manager. So that's definitely going to be key on the table, what are the expectations of the position. And I think that falls on the HR side of the client, yeah. not the HR side or the recruiter side. The recruiter side expectations uh, from a client standpoint, I think, would pretty much just be to find the right candidate that fits that position. But the expectations of the actual job, that's on the client. I would agree with that, and from the client side, I would agree with that, that the HR, um, the, um, the employer needs to um, give that information to the recruiter. And if they're not getting that information, it's important for the recruiter to portray um, professionally, of course, that you you need this information, too, mm -hmm. in order to help them. But um. All right. You know what I find? That a lot of corporations that you would believe have every job description mm -hmm. out there. They don't. Mm -hmm. And then what also um, <laughs> I find is that they don't even know the expectations of the job. All right. they know is, well, the president says that he wants this report. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to get the report? And you have to, you have to really be and diplomatic and a politician sometimes. You got to really have to yeah. ex express diplomacy because <clears throat> you don't want to offend your, your client. Right. You right. Know? Exactly. And they and they want to say face. Right. But, to, but you got to get this information if you're going to do your job. Right. And then it opens the can of worms yeah. inside corporate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they don't know. Right. A lot of that boils down to just how effectively run or how efficiently run is the company. Exactly. Are they spending all the time working? in their business and not spending much time working on their business. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. And as you say that, let's kind of switch to the other side. Now we get to the job seeker. Mm -hmm. 
and <coughs> the job seeker is coming in with unclear expectations. Right. Um, the the job posting is not really clear. Mm -hmm. You know, it just says for the sake of everyone knowing, uh, it just says administrative assistant mm -hmm. must type forty five words a minute. Didn't say accurate. Just basic. <laughs> <laughs> it just said you must type. Um, and again, someone comes in, they say, I can do this. So now let's switch roles. How does the responsibility change for the job seeker? What is the job seeker's responsibility to the recruiter? First and foremost, the job seeker has a responsibility to himself and whichever company he ends up working for in taking a step back and figuring out exactly what he or she wants to do. And Hey, I just need a job. I, I just need a job. That's the problem that a lot of job seekers have, yes. is they have that short-term mentality that will say, oh, I can do anything, or I'll do anything, I just need a job. Mm -hmm. And that might be a short-term fix, but it doesn't tend to lead to longevity or really truly effectiveness or success in a career. Sure. And I think the point is the majority of the population is paycheck-centric. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm bringing in a check, mm -hmm. as long as I'm punching the clock every day and being able to take care of my family, I'm good. And we need to change that perception. Okay. Now, is that recruiter's responsibility or career coaches? Either or. Not everybody can afford a career coach. Not everybody's going to turn to a recruiter and use them as a tool <coughs> or a resource Correct. as opposed to just the person that's interviewing me. That's how a lot of job seekers look at recruiters. But I find that if you, if you sit down with your recruiter, whether it's an internal recruiter or a third-party recruiter, they can be your strategic ally to help you kind of craft your strategy and your goals and your long-term plan. And unfortunately, with the economy being the way that it is, a lot of people are not on that level. Right. Okay. And so, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and that's true because as far as the uh, candidate that's seeking that position, it's their job to the recruiter to give them every little detail about their position that's relevant to that actual position because we don't want to know that you worked at McDonald's when you were unless you were actually <laughs> in human resources at McDonald's or whatever uh, actual uh, AA position for McDonald's. Then give us that. But I don't want to know that you were dumping fries. That's not relevant to the position. Mm -hmm. So the client must understand and realize they need to give the recruiters exactly what's relevant to the position. Fill in the gaps and go from there. Now as far as the mindset um, and the professional career goals, I will agree with you on that. Today's economy has dictated that. It's not a matter of let me get up the ladder now. It's a matter of let me just hold on to my job. Mm -hmm. So people are just going day by day because you go into your job today, you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Absolutely. Because these companies, are, a lot of companies now are no longer loyal. Sure. They're not loyal. So it's common to now see people on resumes jumping from job to job because companies are not loyal, mm -hmm. uh, employees or, or corporate associates are not loyal because the ones that have that professional mindset that I want to go up the ladder, they will jump right. and because they want that higher title. They don't want that title in the lateral position. They want the title and the money. Mm -hmm. So they will jump ship. Mm -hmm. But the candidate that's just looking for a job. They're gonna. Yeah, and I like to talk. They're to not gonna have that. I like to tell candidates like I that said. because the same way they have this this um, this need to just get a job right now. Right. In the same measure, in reverse, that recruiter may have the same need to keep that job. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just because you need a job really bad, is that does not outweigh the fact that I need to keep my job. Right. So I'm not going to just uh, my my um, incentive. Is to present the best candidate possible Correct. that'll make me look good. Correct. Yeah, and that happens to be you, great. If not, then I'm going to have to look out for myself. I have to feed my family. Correct. Because right. right. I think the biggest burden falls on the job seeker. Okay. Because the job seeker is expected to, and you know, in today's market, it's a employer's market. You're going to have to be out there um, applying for tons and tons of jobs, and you're going to have to tailor each resume towards that job because employers aren't going to want to see like you were saying employers don't want to see irrelevant things they right. want they want they have to go through 600 resumes for one job they're going to just want to see why this person is going to fit this job description so it's really the biggest burden falls on the job seeker 
um, he has he or she has the most to um, lose or gain from this whole process so it depends on them to contact the recruiter to remain in contact with the recruiter to give the recruiter as much information as possible um, and to work closely with them and also I think in this there's for me there's no excuse in this day and age of technology and social media to not figure a way to brand yourself. I don't care if you're a receptionist, I don't care if you're an executive assistant, I don't care if you're a CEO or a CFO. You, there are so many ways for you to brand yourself these days. And you need to figure out how do I take my resume, my experience at McDonald's, and take the hard skills that I learned from that mm -hmm. and show that they're transferable. transferable. So Absolutely. whereas I may not want to see that they dump fries, I want to see, well, how did you deal with the customer? Correct. How did you handle stress? How did you handle sticky situations? Mm -hmm. So figure a way to take what looks like just, hey, I just worked at McDonald's, and show how you excelled. So I look at all of that, and, and I know I'm not all recruiters are the same. Everybody has their different little quirks or whatever. I'm looking at the total package. I want to know, what did you bring from that experience? Right. And if you can't, as a, as a job seeker, tell me what experience you bought from that that's relevant that you can bring into an admin role or whatever role it is, then you're doing yourself a disservice. I think it starts with figuring out who you are as a job seeker, what your goals are, and what hardcore skills you can bring to the table that you know you can impress this employer with, as opposed to saying, here's my resume. Right. Right. Talk about your career today. Stephanie, sweetheart. Hey, Stephanie, what's going on? Hey, Stephanie, what's going on? Hey, Stephanie, what's going on? This episode of Career Magazine TV was brought to you by The Wisdom Knot and the National Association of Women-Owned and Small Business Incorporated. To sponsor an episode of Career Magazine TV, give us a call at 404-604-4511.